the Bombers O-line deserves a lot of respect. They created so many openings for Harris. I mean, a guy that is coming off injury, you don't want to have him banging up against too many walls yeah. here. And yeah. uh, so many times, he's just parting, parting the sea. Welcome back to the 11th Island. I'm Brad here with Chris. CFL Finals weekend is over and we're going to end the season the same way we started this season and the same way we ended 2019 with the Winnipeg Blue Bombers playing the Hamilton Tiger Cats in the 2021 Grey Cup. They both won today. Chris, which game are we going to start talking about? Well, we're going to start with the game that happened first. Hamilton 27, Toronto 19 at BMO Field in Toronto. A little bit of snow coming down, Brad. We were at that game. What are your thoughts? Yeah, like you said, we were at that game. It was it was fun, really fun atmosphere. I would say one thing, if you are a Toronto Argonauts fan that l had a reasonable chance at making it to this game and did not, you should honestly be embarrassed with yourself. It was a 21,000 people showed up. Probably 15,000 of them were Hamilton Tiger Cats fans. You looked across the stadium. It was just black and gold. It's a very tough look for Toronto fans. But that being said, I mean, Toronto came out strong in the first half. But I think there's three plays from the first half that are the reason why the Toronto Argonauts lost this game. Two, on the three-yard line, kicking two field goals from there in the first half when they're leading. Just to me, in an East final, this is inexcusable. you got to play to win the game. And at that point, taking threes over sixes it just isn't going to cut it. He, I, your team, especially when you're rolling, and you had – this was – Masoli was still in for Hamilton, and he was reeling. Mm -hmm. You got to take the shot. You got to take the shot. At worst, you have them pinned. You can't just settle for three points. And then the last play of the, not the last play, the second to last play of the first half, when they got the fumble recovery and fumbled it essentially in Hamilton's red zone. It was very difficult for us to see because it was on the other side of the field. But when you just give away those couple of points at the end of the half to kind of take that stranglehold, it really, it really just screwed up with the momentum. If you're looking at, if you're able to punch in one of those for a touchdown, get a field goal to end the half, you're going in maybe 16 nothing. You got a stranglehold on a team that's still trying to get it together with Evans, who who just came in for QB. They're trying to figure out their QB situation. Instead, you leave it 12 nothing. They got a little bit of hope. They get a punt return for a touchdown early in the second half dane evans comes in doesn't even get an incompletion and they just start rolling the fans in the stadium just started losing it it quickly became an all hamilton crowd and then it was lost toronto just could not get any momentum for the rest of the game and, and hamilton was just eating it up when you have opposing players ch and getting the crowd going and home fans trying to quiet the crowd i mean we're, we're in trouble here and that's what happened in the second half once they were able to get rolling but they were able to get rolling because of Toronto's just, I don't even know what to call it, just inability to, to take a chance. You're the, you, you were the first in the East for a reason. You played well during the year. You have good players on your team. This isn't early in the season when you didn't trust the guys, which clearly they didn't trust them for a long time. McLeod Bethel Thompson didn't even get trust to throw down field until halfway through the season. Let, let them go out and prove their worth. Wow. Okay. Anything else to say, Brad? You know, and, and I think okay, I will I think say. I will say. I also. Oh, will so say you actually? Want, I'm just teasing you, and you I actually. Have, oh, actually, I, you're inviting me to talk more. Okay, what? Yeah, what do you? I'm, what I'm else so, you got to say? I, I will also say, and I, I'm sure. I don't know how much we want to get into it, but not having your starting QB for the last three days of practice before an East final game hurts a lot. Yeah, and whether you want to blame MLSC, you want to blame the CFL. Don't blame McLeod Bethel Thompson because he was doing what his bosses at MLC told him. Whoever you want to blame for the party, that would have significantly affected this game. Throws off the whole rhythm coming into it. Throws off your last three days of practices before the most important game of his career. It, it, it of course, it affected it. Mental stress. You got to deal with the media on it. You know, it's it's yes. not a talking point you want going into the game. If you're management, if you're coaching, it's a tense environment uh, for sure. And... and, and the thing with Macbeth, safe play is going mm -hmm. to win you regular season's games. Safe play is going to even itself out to the point where you can win a division as the Argos have yeah. done. But you're going to need some playmakers to really come out, especially when you're going up against a defense like the Hamilton Tiger Cats, and you get two times you're on the red in the red zone. You you're right. You can smell it. 
You can smell Within the grass in the end zone. Five mm-hmm. yards. You got to take chances. You got to take some chances, especially when, as you said, you 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 got Mazzoli pinned. There's a good chance if you get stopped there, turnover on downs, you can get a safety. Yeah, you're down one one point off if you would have kicked. You know, the way uh, the O-line was for Hamilton at that point in the game, the way uh, Mazzoli was holding on to the ball that point in the game and scrambling, easy sa- like you you have them pinned. And then you get great field position if they're able to just get lucky and get a free uh, to and out. You know, it, it's it's difficult if you're the Argonauts to look at this game and say, you know, oh, that was out of our hands. You know, we, we just didn't have it there. I mean, one thing, I mean, the shining light here, Boris Beattie, best kicker in the CFL this season. Uh, I mean, he was phenomenal this game, but well, he you missed can't. A kick. He missed a kick. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so he missed a kick. After scoring all of the points, <laughs> yeah, yeah, he's single handed. Like, think, the- think, it's a numbers game at that point for yeah. Boris Beatty. How many times they've they put him out? Yeah, I mean, the the unfortunate thing is those points really could have could have been big in this game. The way at some of the points, we're t- we're we're hammering a lot on Toronto here. Hamilton, mm-hmm. a lot of respect to them. They went into the half down twelve nothing. I, I mean, they were in Toronto. I mean, it's a home crowd essentially mm-hmm. for them, but they're still, a, a, we'll call it an away game here. Mm-hmm. And they really rallied. Dane Evans, who hasn't seen the field in, in a long time in meaningful action, came in, played lights out, uh, 16 for 16 on his passes, looked really good uh, scrambling around too. He, I mean, I've been saying it for a while that I don't think we should have made the discussion Masoli to Dane Evans. Uh, uh, to me, they had chose Masoli. It, it's looking a lot like they should have chosen Dave Evans quite a while ago. But a lot of balls on the coach to make that switch mm-hmm. early in the first half, too. Mm-hmm. And clearly, it panned out from They leave Masoli, and I don't think they win this game. And the defense never let up for Hamilton here, led by Ja'Garrett Davis, who played lights out and would have had an even better stat line if there wasn't a few roughing the passers that are Highly questionable. Yes, if yeah, we're being honest really, with ourselves. really questionable. And I think with Dane Evans, the the idea to move him in. I mean, you got to keep Mazzoli on a short leash coming out of last week, where he was serviceable, did the job, but still nothing lights out. You're you're looking at this game. Well, it's it, it's going to be a we're going to need to scrap it here offensively. We need something exciting. Mazzoli. I mean, the Argos have the book on Mazzoli, and that that's clear now. That That is more clear than ever. It, it was pretty clear what, in the last game they played. You put out Dane Evans here, and mm-hmm. Dane Evans, you know, he hasn't played in a while, meaningful snaps in a while. His, he had tough time against the Argos this season at BMO Field, and he gets a huge monkey off his back here going into the Grey Cup. I mean, you, you have to be really happy with the way that this quarterback, I mean, this quarterback battle that we were promised going into the season for Hamilton Tiger Cats has not really panned out the way we expected it to uh, in terms of actually having some clarity. But in terms of, and it hasn't been the prettiest thing all through the season. It's it's often been really, really just, what are we throwing at the wall today? But mm-hmm. going into the Grey Cup, it seems to have worked in Hamilton's favor overall. They're coming off one of the best halves of football they've played in the, mm-hmm. end, the at the end of this game, putting a twenty-seven to seven is the second half score for Hamilton. There, they really put it to Toronto. Dane Evans has has taken control and he's running with it. Dane mm-hmm. Evans is clearly the QB going into the Great mm-hmm. Cup. The defense is rolling on all cylinders. You got Brandon Banks is jumping around after the game, and he's so small he looked like a child jumping around. But he's clearly he's back in it because in all like he's somebody. And if you're at a game and you pay attention to 16 on the field, he is somebody that he is so like he's never shuts. I, but it's it's even at, towards his own team, he's always just going and going and going. And it seems to be like I I, I wondered for a long time if it was going to be kind of a locker room issue. And it's clearly somebody he needs to get into the game. Things need to be going well for him, and it's going to be great. Mm-hmm. Like when things are going good, it's great. When things are going bad, it's bad. They use that today. I don't know if you noticed, Chris. Mm-hmm. One of the plays right in front of us, the on the third and short where they were going to punt it. They had Brandon Banks look like he was losing it on the field. Mm-hmm. They weren't going for it, and then they snuck up and took it. And mm-hmm. clearly, I, I'm going to guess that's by design. So it's a situation when you have a guy on your team in Brandon Banks who you're going to take advantage of his essentially attitude you mm. know things are going well for your team right now yes and another i mean stand out don jackson running back yes. uh just in that second half 
ripping right through the Argonauts defensive line. That was something that the Thai Cats realized this is a huge weakness here, and they just were exploiting, exploiting, exploiting it. And I think that really was a great time for Jackson to step up like that, considering Dane Evans is still kind of feeling himself out throughout this yeah. game. It takes a lot of pressure off him. You know, the, you have the Argos saying, well, you know, the kicking game has not been great from the Ticats, really questionable. And the, the Ticats just said, we're not going to use kickers for a, while, <laughs> for a lot of that game. Switch into the second down conversions when they didn't need to, just so we didn't have to kick uh, or they didn't have to kick. And uh, and Dane Evans, uh, still t very touchable from a from the perspective of a defense. So then you go to the run game and just breaking through unstoppable. So many runs for fir first downs. It's demoralizing. Really, if you uh, to play against an an offense like uh, the ones that the Tie Cats put out today. Well, I mean, there was a reason why that there was how many unsportsmanlike objectionable conduct penalties on the Argos defensive line today. Mm -hmm. There's a reason for those. Mm -hmm. That wasn't just them. I mean, you, they lost their composure for good reason. They were getting lit up by the run game. Something that they pride themselves on stopping, and mm -hmm. they couldn't in the second half. They just couldn't do anything about it, and. The Hamilton's punching their ticket off to the Grey Cup at home, and um, all those fans are going to be very happy at Tim Hortons Field. It's kind of it's a situation we thought from the start of the season that Hamilton was had a really good shot at making the Grey Cup. People thought they might go undefeated. They had a really up and down year, but here they are. They got they're they're back they're back in the show. They got a rematch, and they got a chance it to was, shut, yeah. shut everybody up. It wasn't always pretty, but it was always exciting. And now Hamilton's headed to the Grey Cup. Uh, any final thoughts on that game as I switch over to our next topic? Well, yeah, it was cold there. It was cold. It, it was fun. It was. Yeah, but it, don't it was say it's cold because everybody at that Winnipeg game will tell you that was nothing. Yeah, well, maybe move out east and it'll get a little bit warmer. Mm -hmm. Yeah, now, well, I shouldn't complain. Now, I, the people tell me to go south and it'll get yeah. warmer. <laughs> So Winnipeg beat Saskatchewan 21 to 17 in a game maybe closer than some people were expecting. Um Yeah, yeah, I mean we a lot of people were expecting Saskatchewan, a lot of people including me were expecting Saskatchewan to get blown out here. I'm going to say in all fairness, we just mentioned that we were at the Toronto game. If you were there, the traffic was absolutely oh, nuts. I tried traffic. my best. Always the traffic. I tried my best. I did not get home in time to see any of this game. I've got this, I got as much of the radio call as I could. I got Chris giving me the spark notes. I got some takes coming into it, but I'm going to let Chris really take the lead on this as he was able to, we go separate directions. He was able to get the go train, get the game up there, get home in enough time to see a lot of it. So Chris, the one thing that I saw is there was a lot of turnovers in this game. Mm -hmm. So, and that was kind of the, the dish of choice from last week. And it seems like Winnipeg and Saskatchewan kept it going this week. Am I right about that? Yes, and and I think the difference in the turnovers that I was watching and seeing, like the game that I watched was much more about defense, whereas the games last week, the turnovers in that Calgary-Saskatchewan game was much more about blunders offensively. And I okay. think that there was some really great defensive play on both sides that led to, you have playmakers on both teams, and a lot of the times it was a ball being stripped, it was a, a really agile play to sneak up on a wide receiver, poke that ball out. Um, so I, I, I think I think that uh, the turnovers, it's a different story than last week. This was a fun, uh, really exciting game that started out super defensively, super st strategically, and then turned into, in the latter half, an all-out gunslinging battle uh, between these two teams. And mm -hmm. I... I really think that the Bombers, like, you can't discredit the Bombers here because you got to lift up the Rough Riders for playing a really good game. Cody Fajardo is a gamer at the end of the day. He's going to scrap, and uh, he was running the ball well, um, throwing the ball pre pretty, pretty good. Let, let's take, I mean, 70% um, passer rating, which after last week, uh, really good. The big stat. Sorry, passer no rating or completion? Or completion rating, sorry. Um, zero interceptions, which is the big thing. So you talk about all these turnovers. I mean, Kalaros on the other side of the ball threw three. So um, mm -hmm. Fajardo really making improvements off this game. Uh, and yeah, it was, it was just 
there was a lot of really good plays from Andrew Harris, who comes in now, re- like breathing new life into this Bombers offense. And, yeah, uh, I was wondering going into this game how much uh, if Winnipeg was going to have a slow start. I was really mm-hmm. interested in see that because they haven't played meaningful football mm-hmm. in so long, and then you have Andrew Harris who has been out since mid October, mm-hmm. believe. Yeah. So I was wondering if they were going to be slow starting and against a Saskatchewan, and by the looks of things, that might have might have been the case there. Correct me if I'm wrong on that. But for Winnipeg here, they clearly got it rolling. They're going to be rolling into a rematch that they're going to be confident in. It, it's it's going to be – it's setting up to be a good game here. But do Claros' three interceptions, do you think that's going to be an issue? Uh, well, you talked about a slow start. And early first drive mm-hmm. for Winnipeg, they throw into the end zone, off the receiver's hands, boom, interception. That one's less on Claros, I think. It's more of just physics when you get down to it, those big plays. And, uh, and and you look at that, and, and it really was coming off of that that the mm-hmm. Saskatchewan Rough Riders said, "Okay, we have we have something." If if that play doesn't happen, very different game, I think, from the Rough Riders. Just to just to have that confidence and and hearing all the people saying like, "We have no chance," like people, you have no chance, you have no chance. This is this is Goliath. This is a David and Goliath day, and they just found a little pebble in the creek, and that's their hope right there. Um, and, and after that, I think Claro's really settled into this game. Um, I don't think you can put too much credence into the interceptions. Um, the run game, again, really shielded him very well. Harris with, I think, over 130 yards. Um, just and, and really, I think the, the Bombers O-line deserves a lot of respect. They created so many openings for Harris. I mean, a guy that is coming off injury, you don't want to have him banging up against too many walls yeah. here and yep. uh so many times it's just parting parting the sea f- like just yeah. phenomenal play from the offensive line and uh i i think that uh really really fun football game to watch yeah there's a reason why half the west all-stars were winnipeg blue bombers i think mm-hmm. it's gotta be it's gotta be a heartbreaking way for saskatchewan back-to-back season yes. losing to winnipeg in the west final but winnipeg's deserved it they've had a Dream, really dream year so far. There is really few hiccups that they've quickly fixed, and they're going back to the Great Cup. And at, at things in Winnipeg got to be really looking up. They had a, some some tough years before this, but th- th- they got a real chance here at going back to back. They're going to walk in there, even in Hamilton, that's having a home game. I think Winnipeg will walk in there a few points favorite. Yes, yeah. So let's get into just early thoughts about that. So if you're uh, the button, there we go. If you're a coach on either team, if you're Craig Dickinson, if you're Coach O'Shea, you're watching the other team play. What is your well, thought? Dickinson, Craig Dickinson's at home? Hmm? You say Craig I... Dickinson? Yeah. Yeah. No, Orlando Steinhauer. Michael Shea. Oh, oh my goodness. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm... It's, yeah. It's, it's been a long day. <laughs> I'm thinking, it's of, been a I'm long thinking day. of, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking of the matchups here and I'm, I'm a week. I'm this week's matchup. <laughs> Anyways, if you're, if you're, Coaches, what's going through your head about your opponent? Well, it's it's tough because you're looking at a Hamilton team that we haven't got a consistent long look mm-hmm. at, at an offense with either guy, Masoli or Dane Evans, really here. Mm-hmm. You're going to know that they're going with Dane Evans now. Mm-hmm. You can look back to the last great cup where Dane Evans was behind center for in that great cup and, and Winnipeg really knew how to get to him. I think it's a situation where you know as much as Hamilton got rolling – They've been so up and down inconsistent this year that you know that if you if you attack them, get them down early, get them really out of a rhythm, there's real potential here to kind of start running away with the game. You can't let them get rolling, especially knowing at home the, the crowd's going to be very much on their side, that you have to start off strong, put them down in the game early, silence the crowd, and kill the rhythm. Mm-hmm. And for Hamilton, I think it's looking at the same way, knowing that you need to get going early. you got to get that rhythm because you you can't go into halftime down big and expect to come back like you would against a Toronto Argonauts team mm-hmm. with this Winnipeg team. you got to get the crowd in it early. You not with their, yeah, the not board. with the way they play in the fourth quarter. No, you gotta, you really got to get going early on this Winnipeg team and get your crowd into it quick. Mm-hmm. So I think it's going to be a situation where who can win those early battles. I think both teams are really going to focus on that. Mm-hmm. Yes, and, and I think that for Winnipeg, you really got to respect Dane Evans. 
whatever yep. Dane Evans actually is, you have to view him as the best. You're going to you're going to be going up against the best Dane Evans there's ever been. You got to respect Don Jackson because you see uh, uh, Argos defense that has been so good against the run game this season just get swish cheesed up up the middle by Jackson. Mm -hmm. You have to have a lot of respect for the Ticats offense. Maybe respect that it doesn't actually reserve, but if you deserve, but if you are a Bombers team that has been so dominant, so good, has so much wind shoved up your butt all season, you have a couple weeks off, a few weeks, quite a few weeks off from meaningful games, you come in and you get touched a little bit by a very scrappy Rough Riders team. You have to come in with reverence and a healthy amount of fear of mm -hmm. the Thai Cats, ultimately with that confidence that, you know, this is ours to take back. And we're and we gotta turn this, we gotta pretend like we're playing at home here. We have to block up. There's gonna be more Thai Cats fans than our own fans. We gotta block this mm -hmm. out and pretend like we're at IG Field. For the Thai Cats, you have to go full emotions, full heart here. I think Thai Cats are a team that has made it through this season on willpower. And just a few key pieces in their uh, organization to just remind them, look what we're fighting for. The Grey Cup will be in Hamilton this season. Let's make sure it mm -hmm. stays there in the offseason. You know, and, and, and you look at a guy like Jagger Davis, who very much like this whole Ty Cod team, team has been very, one game he's, he's this, another game he's that. Ultimately, his ceiling is super high and he's put out some great numbers overall through the season. You see him in a very emotional game where, you know, with all the McLeod Bethel Thompson stuff, he's directly involved in that in that whole conversation, being a guy that has suffered the fines from the CFL yep. for co breaking code of COVID protocol. And then you see an opposing QB kind of get kind of get some favoritism shown to him and an yep. exception made. That's frustrating. And we saw that in Jagger Davis from the start of this game today. And it's that type of emotions, that type of willpower that's going to drive uh, Thai Cats to beat the Winnipeg Blue Bombers. Yeah, and if you're the Blue Bombers, you can't bank on that emotional high that Hamilton just got. Hamilton has had that belief all season. This is just an expectation for them. When we talked to Jagarid in about week eight, week nine, at that point, they were tied for third in the East. Dane Evans and Jeremiah Masoli were hurt, and David Watford was starting games. Jagarid Davis told us, like, we're going to make the Grey Cup. Doesn't matter who's in QB, we're going to find a way there. Mm -hmm. And they're here. They figured it out at QB. They figured out a way to get there. Let's see what can happen. And and then if you are a fan of this show, you know what we did this week. But if you're new to the show, we're going to give our full Grey Cup analysis, breakdown, predictions going up Wednesday, 5 p.m. Eastern, Chris. Is that correct? Yes, Wednesday, 5 p.m. Eastern. We'll have odds. We'll have thoughts. We'll have a weather report for Hamilton. We'll have a ton of information that's going to come out now that's not here yet. And uh, check it out then. For now, for the rest of the show, we're going to talk about the losers from today and where do they go from here first off the argos how's that off season looking brad it's it's tough uh i could see the argos having a lot of i think ryan dinwiddie his first year as head coach i think you gotta look at that as a successful one the argos mm -hmm. weren't supposed to be where they were at uh i think you gotta definitely he's coming back for sure pinball obviously coming back but there could be some, there could be a lot of changes in the roster. McLeod Bethel Thompson, is he the QB you want to go with here? You traded Nick Arbuckle, put all the faith in, mm -hmm. in Macbeth. I'd be okay starting next year with Macbeth as a starting QB, but I could see them going somewhere else if a big name QB becomes available in free agency. I think Macbeth might be kind of the safety option here. Uh, for the rest of the roster, there's going to be like Charleston Hughes, I imagine, out the door. I think you got, if Oakman comes back and Shane Ray who are going to take looks down south. I think you, you got to be happy with those guys, but if those guys start going south, you're going to have to fill some roster spots here. It's going to be it's going to be an interesting offseason for the, the Toronto Argonauts. I think even more than personnel, though, the biggest things for the Argos are going to be off the field. Mm -hmm. Yes. So we had a friend of Tiger Cats fan text me this week, said, hey, is this will this be the Argos' last game in the CFL? 
and we hear more murmurs about and that's just a you know that's just a guy but that's the talk that's the talking point now oh are they leaving cuz start of this year the Argonauts organization kind of came out floated the idea of this being the last CFL season then we take a year off and join the XFL in 2023 Brad is this smoke was that just promoting the season trying to get buzz around the team or is there something there I I think the MLS scene might think there's something there. I think when it comes down to the nitty gritty of it, I don't think there's very much there. I, I cannot see the Toronto Argonauts leaving the CFL. I mean, w in Canada, there's literal government uh, regulate or legislation. Wow, mm. I got that one. Legislation that there cannot be without specific approval. Football teams in Canada that are not part of the CFL if they're professional. It's happened before. It's not saying it can't happen. But the Toronto Argonauts became an XFL team, it, I think it becomes a direct threat to the CFL. And I think that the rest of the league, all eight other teams, would really fight that. Mm -hmm. And especially with the Atlantic expansion coming presumably soon from the CFL, to go from nine teams back down to eight, back to nine, clearly they're looking to get five and five and get ten teams. Mm -hmm. I, think, I, I, I think it's a lot of smoke and mirrors. I think the more likely thing is MLSC floats it out there, they get mad, and they sell the team, which in all reality, I think they should. MLSC mm. clearly doesn't care about it. We need a kind of a small market owner that's really in here to win football games, not just say, I want to own all the Toronto sports teams. Yes. Yeah, it's really, I think the Argos are there to be monopolized. Like it was a, it was part of a monopolization to, mm. to go in, capture the Argos, and now, I mean, you go there and everything's I'll go to BMO field. Everything's geared toward the FC. The MLSC has the Raptors, which is the kind of the shiny hip thing that's that's just in right now and, and is just growing, 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 growing. You have the Maple Leafs that is just your tried and true, you know, your franchise. I mean, it's what your corporation is named for. And then you have mm -hmm. the Toronto FC, which... Uh, I mean, soccer is continues to grow huge. The World Cup is coming to Hamilton, and that's just going to be exploding. It, or it already is exploding, and it's going to be huge. It's going to be at the level of I would, of the Raptors and the Maple Leafs pretty soon. I think BMO Field, there there will be a time soon where BMO Field is not big enough for the Toronto FC. I yeah, I don't, I I don't I don't disagree with that, and I think yeah, I I I could I could I can get behind that argument. So it's a situation where, where where do the Argos fit into this, especially if they're not growing? I mean, we know they finished dead last in attendance for a first place team. Doesn't make any sense. And the only thing that's going to be a real issue if they do decide to move on and sell the team, I mean, MLSC has got ownership of BMO Field with the Toronto FC. The, that could become a real issue for where the Argos are going to play. Yes. So but, there's going to be a lot of Argos news, I think, this offseason. Yeah. It's going to be fun to catch up on. And we're not going to get too much in the weeds on this because we're going to get on to the Rough Riders off season. Brad, thoughts? I mean, we're looking at two straight seasons with heartbreak. Losing in the West Fund with Winnipeg Blue Bombers. And there's really no shame in that as the Winnipeg Blue Bombers are an outstanding team and are going to walk into the Grey Cup as favorites. But for Saskatchewan that lives and, and breathes for the Rough Riders, it's gonna it's a hard pill to swallow. And the guy that's up on our template right now, Cody Fajardo, is gonna take a lot of that blame. Mm -hmm. And fair or not, people are gonna question whether or not to bring him back. What do you think? Do you think they should bring him back? Uh, I th I think based on what I saw last week, what I saw this week, mm -hmm. I think he's the guy. I think that He's very unorthodox. He takes a lot of risks with his body, with the football, you know, that create a lot of danger. But at the same yeah. time, uh, he can blow, cr blow open and crack open a game at the drop of a hat. And I think that's the style that the Rough Riders have built. And I think they, they you got to keep with that. Yeah, I don't think you can name three QBs more than three QBs that are better than him in the CFL mm -hmm. right now. Yeah, and I I think he I think he's good. He's if, I believe he's still relatively young. Mm -hmm. He's got some years left ahead of him. I think if Saskatchewan were to move on from him, they would look back on it and regret it. I think you're a few pieces away. 
Mm -hmm. uh, you're, you, I mean, you contended against the Blue Bombers here. I know it sucks to be like, what well, you were in that in it, but you were in it. Mm -hmm. You finished second. You can go into 2022 really. You, you're just a few, one play or two away from making the Great Cup. It's a uh, put it together, get guys in, have a full true off season. You never know what can happen next year. I think there's just a few little things Craig Dickinson can tweak into uh, the off season and the Rough Riders are going to be back up there in the playoffs in the West final. Brad, final thoughts on this weekend of CFL playoff football. It was a really fun weekend. Uh, being at BMO field for that atmosphere was electric being in Canada. We really haven't had much since COVID started. So it was really enjoyable. Something that, I mean, it was our first East final that we've been able to, our, the biggest football game that we've been at in our, our, our lives really. So it was, it was really fun, really looking forward to the gray cup next weekend with Hamilton and Winnipeg. We're going to be giving that to you on Wednesday, and we're going to have our kind of immediate reaction to the Grey Cup next Sunday. Might be a little later than we're posting now just because we're going to be at that game as well. So we've got to get the coming back and everything. But Chris, do you have anything else? Uh, our names are down here if you want to roast us. And uh, like, subscribe, everything like that. We'll see you guys in the next video.